everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. I'm gonna go over a really detailed example, which is just seriously uh, amazing. It showcases what you can do with DAX in an amazing way. Now we're gonna to calculate to cumulative totals or, or running totals, however you wanna call it, but we've got no date and no index column, okay? And so what this actually stemmed from was a question in the Enterprise DNA support forum. So uh, people who have mem uh, Enterprise DNA memberships, they can ask questions, and this was a really advanced question. And uh, I won't go into you know, exactly the scenario that this specifically was for. I'm gonna talk about the technique that was used to solve it, because uh, this is actually probably gonna be quite quite common. But, um, but what this one was all about was there was some a quite complex uh, logic or an algorithm running over uh, some information or, or some um, allocation that was required. But then post that, there was a cumulative or running total requirement, but there was no date to it. It was just say, and it was just a random number generator, um, but uh, we had to generate, or what was required was the generation of a cumulative total from the, the first one, uh, the, the, the first result, second result, third result, so on and so forth. And so we played around with a few ideas and we, we finally landed on how you can, in a dynamic way, create a cumulative total um, based on having no date and having, uh, having no initial uh, index column. So certainly uh, if you want to uh, check this one out in a bit more detail about how we, how we worked through and solved it, I'll, I'll leave a link below in the description. But I'm gonna talk through the, uh, I'm gonna talk through the actual uh, technique here. And, and, it, and I've, I've actually, seen this maybe asked a couple of times um, previously in a different way, um, but you could utilize a similar technique. Now it's not easy. There's a, a number of steps to it. You have to understand a number of different functions in DAX, but, uh, but it's just amazing that it's possible. If you walk through a few of these steps, it's amazing that you can actually achieve this. So that's what I wanna do. I wanna show you how you can, by walking through a number of these different steps, you can actually achieve it. Now, what if for instance, what if for instance, this is the example we're gonna work through. So say for instance we have total sales in this case, and I'll just uh, I'll just format it. We have total sales here, but what we want to do is we actually want to see okay from highest down to lowest, for example. We might then want to next to this actually see a cumulative total. So I actually want to see for um, this product here, which would say be say ranked number two, right? It would be ranked two in this case. Uh, I want to see, okay, I want to see this added to rank number one. And we want to see this, um, so on and so forth as you go down, as you go down this um, table. So, how do we do it? Well, we have to do a few things to be able to achieve this again. Okay? And maybe there is actually another solution to this. This is just the one that uh, was devised and I think is uh, something that can be replicated uh, to many different environments where you might need to do a cumulative total out of text values or or, or, or something of that nature. I mean, there, there is, there is a, you can actually turn this into say a waterfall chart that looks like this. So if this, uh, if this, uh, visualization works for you but in some cases it might not right um, and so you might need something a little bit different and that's where um, work through some of this logic is important okay so the first thing the first thing that you need to do is that it's actually very I don't, I don't think it is possible to actually create a cumulative total off some just random text value so what we need to do is we actually need to create an, a, a, an index we need we need to create an index okay and so how I'm going to do that how I'm actually going to do that is I'm going to utilize uh, the what if parameter because what this does is not only can it throw up what if parameters well it can actually throw up index columns dynamic index columns for us quite easily too so I'm going to call this one I'm going to call this the ranking index I'm going to make it a, a whole number and I'm just going to go from one to in this case let's just go to a really high number we'll go say um, we'll go say 200 and increment of one, add a slicer to the page, I don't need that, and then I'm just gonna go okay. And so that actually brings that into our, our model, it's not gonna join up via relationship or anything, it's just there to support us uh, in some calculations that we're gonna do, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this into a table, I'm gonna create a table, because I actually wanna see, I actually wanna see the number, I wanna see one, two, uh, whatever, right? Now. Interestingly enough, we, we want to create a result here. We want to create a result that is not actually, we want a text value, but it's not actually a column. We're going to return a text value within a measure, okay? Within a measure. So what we need to do 
So we need to create another measure and we need to call this one product um, by ranking, we'll call it product by ranking. And this is where the formula gets a little bit more complex, but very doable, right? Very doable. So what we're gonna do is go to calculate and then I wanna return a text value, right? So I'm gonna go select the value, select the value product name and then I'm gonna return blank if uh, there's say more than one um, value, etc. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say filter. I'm gonna filter my product name, right? I'm gonna go values product name. And this is where the ranking um, logic is gonna come in. I'm gonna filter by this ranking index, right? So I'm gonna say, well, return the product name, return um, the individual product name if the particular product is ranked number one, number two, number three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then within here, I've got to go all products, and then I've got to go total sales, then by descending because that's how um, we have it there, and then I'm going to go equals two, and check out this because I've actually got a um, measure created, this ranking index value. This is well, this was actually automatically generated from the water parameters. That's why it's quite um, uh, quite um, convenient I can just go enter and then check out check out this I can actually I've just realized that's in the wrong one so I'm just going to put it in the right measure group I can actually bring this into my table and you'll see that we actually return this text result right this text result now is returned for every single rank so we've got ranking index here and now we've got product by ranking okay so that's stage one that's stage one this this enables us to within a table dynamically see okay well which product is ranked in uh, which location now, we now want to uh, see, okay, well, what is the total sales by this particular product, right? So we, because we, we want to then, uh, uh, to finish it, we want to run a cumulative total. Well, first of all, we actually want to see the specific results. So we actually want to replicate basically this total sales here. We actually want to replicate it in this table, but we're not going to be able to utilize the automatic filtering from a data model. We're, we're going to filter by an actual result in the measure, okay? So then we need to create, to do that, we need to create a new measure and we're gonna call this one product sales. Then I'm gonna go equals and then I'm gonna go calculate. So we're gonna to calculate total sales, that's what we wanna calculate, but in, within filter, within calculate, we can we can create some different different contexts, some new filters, right? And I'm going to, in this case, go filter values product name Right, so we're going to only return, we're going to create a filter of just a specific product name uh, via this product by ranking that we just created, right? And so we're going to iterate through every single product and only return the product uh, or, or the product's context based on this product uh, by ranking, product by ranking measure we just created. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a filter and this one is going to only filter on product 63 and then return the sales of product 63. So then if I drag this into my table, you'll see now we are replicating in a dynamic way well, within measures this actually, these results here, right? Okay, so this is what we needed to do up to now. Now, the key here, the key thing here though, is we need to create the cumulative total, okay? So, guess what? We are going to create a cumulative total based on this ranking index. And that's why, again, this is quite key, right? This is actually quite key in terms of running this particular logic. So how do we do that? How do we do that? This is this is probably you know the most most advanced for me here, but again, a really really interesting way that you can utilize many different uh, features and functions inside of Power BI. So I'm going to go product uh, cumulative. I'm going to call this one cumulative product sales. And I'm actually going to utilize variables in this case, okay? Um, and in this case, I'm only going to do one. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go. I'm going to call it index rank. And then I'm going to um, reference the ranking index value, okay? Because we, we need this. We need this um, just to finish off our formula. And then I'm going to go return. And then we're going to we're going to within some x we're going to create this dynamic table so that um, as we go through every single rank as we as we sort of go through the line so one two three four five we're going to actually look behind and so say we're on ranking five we're going to look behind and say okay well. Um, uh, we're going to go through every single rank and say, well, if the particular ranking result is below five, below the five rank, we'll then may, uh, retain that in the table and sum that up, 
Okay, so that's, that's I guess, the, the theory behind what we're trying to do. And then I'm just going to type out a pretty complex form here, so just bear with me. So we're going to go filter, um, and then I will talk through it, and then summarize, summarize products. So we need, we need to create a table. We're creating a table here of, say, each product name. So basically what we're doing here, uh, what we have done um, sort of physically in this particular table I'm referencing. So for every product name, I want to look at the sales. I want to look at the sales of that um, particular customer, total sales. Then I also want to reference the sales ranking of that customer. And within this one, within this one, I'm going to uh, reference. I've got to actually put in another rank X here. I'm going to go all products, all products table. And then I'm going to go by total sales, then description. Now, the last thing we need to do here though is this filter, right? This filter. What we need to do is we need to filter this particular table if the sales ranking is less than or equal to the index rank. Okay, so let's we'll go over this in one second. And then if that all, all equals, so if, if it does, then we want to return sales and sales are only, re we're referencing the sales uh, result from this actual virtual table we've created. So look, there's a little bit here. Um, I'm even confusing myself, there's so much um, going on here, but this is, this is I'll, I'll show you what we can actually achieve with the results. So I'll bring this actually into our table, and you'll see that this is actually now creating that cumulative total for us, which is amazing, right? Which is amazing. Okay, but this is this is a key formula. This is a key formula and some key learnings, key takeaways from this video tutorial. I know this is running a little bit longer and we've gone through a lot, um, but really amazing stuff, right? Really amazing stuff how we've done this all within measures. So what we're doing, let's let's look at this table first. Okay? Let's look at this individual virtual table that we're, we're iterating through, right? So in this case, we are creating a table, just think uh, of a table of um, one column showing the product name, and then next to that, we've got the total sales for all of those different products, and then next to that, we have the ranking of all of those um, products. So basically, we are recreating this table here, right? this exact table here, but we're doing it all virtually. And then we're saying, okay, only um, show, only show this table, or we're filtering, we're filtering this table, only show uh, the t a table size when the sales ranking, so the sales ranking in the current context is below, is below this index ranking. Okay, now the thing about this table is it actually is evaluating it every single row here, it's actually evaluating every single product. So that's why this filter actually works. It's actually going through every single product every single time and evaluating what well, is that uh, sales ranking below uh, below this particular in this case and below uh, below or equal to five and because and if it remains what will happen is that we are just looking at say this size of a table here from one to five and then uh, we're counting up the sales that remain for that particular table and then say for instance we get down to product 15 or what we're doing is the table the virtual table has expanded down to say 15 rows and then we're counting up the sales we're counting up the sales of all of those 15 rows or within that virtual table and then we're doing that dynamically as we move down this list as we go down and down and down and then that's how we um, continue to get a cumulative total like so okay so a little bit to that a little bit to that one and um, probably gone in, into enough detail. And oh, look, all I would do is, I mean, there's a little bit to that. Is I'll put a link down uh, to the uh, support forum, uh, support forum um, question that we that we work through. So there's a bit of detail there. Uh, but then also, you you know, in reviewing this video, you can see how you can apply or create cumulative totals. You know, with just a, say a, a, an index number or you know, without dates, etc. Now, if you do want to actually post stuff on the forum, you know, you see that there's some um, good value in that forum and, and actually, um, you know, getting some of your own answers, uh, um, solutions to your own questions, well, then all you have to do is become an Enterprise DNA member. So certainly uh, keep that in the back of your mind as you're, as you're looking through, um, through the support forum, but um, certainly worth, re worth reviewing. Okay, all the very best with this one. Hopefully you can find some way. There may be some very unique example where this um, where this is required, so hopefully you can find a way to utilize it. All the best.